What's going on everybody? Spaceballs here. Welcome back to another Skylanders video. All right, everyone. Today I want to talk about 10, maybe it's 12 things that all free-to-play players, actually all players, should know when playing Skylanders. Some of them you might already know. Some of them I might have touched on in a different video, but I wanted to touch on each one of them in this video quickly because all the things on this list are actually very important. And I feel like there's still a lot of people out there that are still a little confused about some of these things like knockdown, boosting, portal master. So I just want to touch on each one. So let's get right into this one here. The first one on the list here is going to be the Portal Master. So now this is very simple. Most of us start off with Sir George here. And that is because George is probably the best Portal Master in the game currently. Now we are getting more Portal Masters soon. But as of right now, we only have three. Which is Miss Eugene, George, and Bruno. And I would say about 90% of the player base is using George at this point. And that's because George brings shields to the table, he brings attack to your whole team, and he also brings crit rate to all of the Earth Skylanders. Now before I go over the stats here, I just want you guys to take notice of the Portal Masters, and each Portal Master has its own element. So George here is Earth, Eugene is Air, and Bruno is Tech. So now when they're adding stats, they're actually adding stats to their own element. So for Bruno it would be Tech, now the one epic fail that I made when reading this, reading all element Skylanders, but I didn't realize the team here on the bottom actually meant that George had to be on that current team for you to get all of these stats. So in this case, it would be defense plus 10. So when it says team here, that means the portal master has to be on that current team for you to get those stats. When it says default, that means whatever element your portal master is, all of those Skylanders are going to get that extra stat in this case it is accuracy with george it is crit rates and with eugene it is also accuracy so now this is why i think most people are going with george because he's giving you crit rate he's giving you a shield and he's giving you attack to your entire team so that's what makes george kind of stick out here more than any other portal master but when we click on the plus sign here we're going to pull up all of their level boosts so every time you upgrade your level in game you are going to be able to upgrade your portal master so now on your first five levels, you can see Earth Skylanders are getting plus three crit rates. Then you go down to 10, and that's going to be a Portal Master upgrade. And then you go down to 15, and you're going to have another Earth Skylanders plus three crit rate. And that goes all the way down the list and works exactly the same through all levels all the way to 50. And this works the same for all three of these Portal Masters, and I'm sure it'll be the same when they add new Portal Masters to the game. Now the only way to level these Portal Masters up is with potions. So let's click on Bruno here. So let's say we wanted to level him up and get some extra accuracy on our tech Skylanders. We can hit the plus sign and now we can start adding these potions. So we want to keep in mind here that we have to go to level 15 because we know at level 10 we are not going to get the upgrade that we are looking for, which is for all of our tech Skylanders. So the thing with this is you want to upgrade them when you can. Now, if you're not really using any tech Skylanders or any air Skylanders, it's not as important for you. So for me, I'm not really using any air or tech Skylanders at the moment. So I'm not rushing to upgrade them. And even if I was, I would make sure that I'm saving enough potions to max out my main leader as I go. Right now, it seems fairly easy to get enough potions to upgrade your portal master. But I'm sure if I'm upgrading all three of these at the same time, I'm going to run low on potions eventually. So just be weary of how you're using your potions. I mean, now if you're using a bunch of air units or using a bunch of tech units, it is really good to get those extra stats. But I think George gives the best extra stat in his crit rates. So to sum this up here, when it says all element Skylanders with team down below, that means it's only for the portal master when it is in your current lineup. And when it says default, that is all Skylanders that fall under the same element as your portal master. It is that simple. Next thing on this list, which I found out yesterday, I kind of knew this, but I wasn't sure if it actually charged you, so I didn't want to buy it until I was sure. But we have this monthly subscription pack. You can get this free for seven days. This is geared more towards free to play players, but you can actually buy this for seven days. Once you buy it, you can go into your app store and cancel the subscription, which is what I did. So now for seven days, I will get these extra rewards. Then in seven days, it'll just go away and I won't get charged for it. So it is completely free to play friendly. All of you free to play players can do this. So it does not make us spenders or whales. 
Now the next thing I want to go over, and this is more towards new players. This awakening dungeon is so important. It doesn't matter what stage you're farming, but make sure you are doing your 10 entries every single day because this is limited. And if you miss out on this, I promise you, you are going to regret it because you're not going to be able to awaken your main team. And that is going to become a big problem for you. And this goes hand in hand with the arena every day or every 12 hours, you get five attacks. I hope they make it 10 attacks a day. I don't think five is enough. And I think a lot of you guys can agree with that. But again, you want to make sure you're clearing this every single day, even when you start the game, even on your first day of playing the game. It goes hand in hand with the Awakening Dungeon. These medals are going to be so important to you, especially as a free-to-play new player, because you're going to be so short on resources when it comes to six-starring and awakening your Skylanders. And now this is going to bring me to the Arena Shop. Now, this Arena Shop is kind of controversial right now. A lot of people will tell you to buy the Blackout Summit ticket, and now I don't necessarily disagree with this, but as a free-to-play player, you are only going to have enough resources to make one six-star from what they give you for free, and having one copy of Blackout is just not going to compare when being able to buy these other resources like the Awakening Stone and the Evolution Splendor, because with all the arena tokens they give you in the beginning, you should be able to make at least three six-stars just from using your arena medals on these resources instead of buying blackout now eventually i am going to buy blackout i'm just going to make sure my main team is six starred and fully awakened before i start buying this blackout ticket so yes i'll be a month or two behind but at least i'll have my main farming team all set and ready to go and i'll be farming every single day and then it'll be a lot easier for me to come back and get this blackout ticket so now when you're farming your runes as in you know c3 c4 c5 Eventually, you're going to get to a point where all your gear is going to be plus 12, four-star legendary or three-star purple, and you're not going to want to take it to 15 unless it's five-star or six-star gear, in my personal opinion. Now, I know everybody plays these games different, so there's going to become a point where some of your gear is not going to be maxed out, but you're just not going to have enough ether. And what a lot of players are doing is farming C2 with one Skylander. And what that does is it gives you a ton of ether to upgrade your current gear, as in your three or four star legendary gear. Now, I'm not sure how efficient this is for a free to play player, but I have done this a few times myself, and it really helped me in getting my gear up to level 12. So I just wanted to throw this out there for you. A lot of the player base is doing this right now. It seems to be pretty efficient when you're short ether, the blue stones. Because you can farm C2 so fast and you're just stacking up that ether, max out whatever gear you want to max out, and then go back to your 3 or 4 or 5F, whatever it is. And the next thing is the Merge Tower. Now the Merge Tower is also very important. This is where you get your skill stones from. You don't need to get the 3 stars. I think a lot of people try to push themselves for these gems and want to get 3 stars on every single level. That is not what is important here. What is important here is clearing up to 50. So you can get all of these skill stones, including the 32 gold ones at the top. As a free-to-play player, as a new player, your first month in, clearing this is probably one of the most important things you can do in this game. Because I promise you, eventually you are going to be lacking skill stones. And this is really one of the only places you can get them on a steady monthly basis. I'm actually going to do a video on Merge Tower this week. Once I clear up to 50, I am really close to doing so. The next thing I want to talk about is an arena. I should have talked about this before, but it was on the bottom of my list. So let's go to duels here. Now, what I do for arena is during the week, I put a troll team on the bottom, as in a team with no runes or just a single Skylander. And then on Friday, I put my strong team up. This way I can push as high as I can, because the higher you clear at the end of the week, the more rewards you're going to get, the more medals you're going to get. But during the week, you want to make sure you're winning as many tacks as possible. So what's working for me is Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday. I keep a troll team on the bottom. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday or Friday night to Monday morning. I keep my main team on the bottom and then I try to push as high as I can. And this is giving me more medals, more gems. And it's making sure that I'm winning my battles all week long. And this really helps when you're building your first main team. And now when you're building that main team and you're looking to get super boosts, and I actually max super boosted my Royal Brawler this way. When you do your summons, again, this is more geared towards free-to-play players. 
you want to pull one at a time and pick the element that you need or the element that you're trying to super boost. This really helps in getting those super boosts. I know the rates don't seem as good. Trust me, the rates are exactly the same. They just feel worse because you're doing it one at a time. And I literally got my roll brawler, my flash wing, and my stealth elf max super boosted by doing single pulls. And then once you're done with your main team and you have all your main units super boosted, then you can start going back to five pulls if that's what you want to do. It is completely up to you. I just wanted to throw this in there because it's really efficient for a free-to-play player to summon this way even a newer player when you're looking for those key super boosts. The next thing I want to go over here, which I made a whole video on this, I will link it down below, is make sure you're farming boss stages. It doesn't matter which boss stage, the highest one you can farm, make sure you farm it. Gives you the most gold, the most resources, and it's the only stage in any of these floors that drops the evolution potions. So very important, farm those boss floors. Don't forget, the next thing I want to touch on is the xp potions so when you click here you have these potions on the bottom you collect these from campaign and from events stuff like that what i like to do is use these on a one star bring it up to three stars and then i can take that three star put it in my current team take somebody out and then it makes it a lot easier for me to level up that skylander now you could use these on your five stars and six stars but honestly it feels like it's doing nothing anyways you barely get any xp and it will just generally help you so much more to use it on a one to three star because you will see that XP fly up and then you'll be able to get it up to three stars and then you can take it the rest of the way in campaign because you're gonna be farming it anyways. The next thing I wanna go over is gear slots. Now every Skylander pretty much has a different set of gear. So let's pull up some blank ones here. So we got Chop Chop. Now Chop Chop actually has a full set of gear. And when I say full set of gear, I mean a weapon, a helmet, gloves, body, boots, and a ring. But now if you look at some of these other Skylanders, like Chopper, for example, he's got two sets of boots and then he's got everything else normal. If you look at Stealth Elf up on the top here, super OP. She actually has two bodies and she doesn't have a ring, which is really disappointing because I really want to put a crit damage ring on her and I can't because she doesn't take a ring. So just take notice of this when you're building your Skylanders or before you build your Skylanders. Just look at their gear slots because if you're trying to build a attack Skylander and you think in your head that you can put a crit damage ring on it, it might change the Skylander you build knowing that you can't put a crit damage ring or you have to put two sets of gloves or two bodies, whatever it is. But just take notice of this. I don't know if it's in any kind of order or anything like that. There's a lot of theories behind it. I'm not going to get into it in this video. But just take notice when you look at the Skylanders, they all have different types of gear sets. Some of them have the same. Some of them have different, two weapons, two gloves, whatever it is, just take notice of it. The next thing I want to talk about is boosting. Now, in the old version, they had something which was called the crit animation. And when you crit, whether you were an attacker or a healer, you would get a bonus heal or bonus attack. Now, in this version, they call it boosting. And I'm going to read something here that Kiba posted in stream today. This explains it perfectly. And what this says is skill boost is a special attack animation that increases damage slash heal for that attack. It also increases debuff duration by one turn or increases buff duration by one turn granted by the skill. They added boosting in place. So now instead of having that crit animation, that is what boosting is. Now I know a lot of people are confused by that. So now I hope that clears up what boosting does and what the boosting stat is. Now we also have knockdown. A lot of people are asking me why their knockdown doesn't work. And the only way you can knock down the enemy is if they have zero endurance. So if the enemy has stacked endurance, you won't be able to knock him down. If he has no endurance, you'll be able to knock him down. I'm going to make a separate video on these two things in the upcoming future. I just wanted to touch on them here really fast just to clear it up for you a little bit. So I think we touched on everything on this list. The last thing I want to go over is the two man Cyclops c5 team now like i always tell you guys stealth elf and flash ring i actually made a video on this they are so op especially when paired together because stealth elf protects herself and then flash wing just keeps her healed so potentially if you have enough hp stacked on your flash wing and enough damage on your stealth elf you can actually two man c5 no problem sayros has a video on this i'm gonna try to find it and link it below he is new to youtube so show him some love and check it out. I'm going to do my best to find it and link it down below. And what he shows in that video is 
Stealth Elf and Flashwing, two manning C5. I don't know if he got the three star or not. You might have to three star first, and then you could use Flashwing and Stealth Elf on auto. I don't know if that would be efficient. I just wanted to throw this in there towards the end of the video. Just in case you guys are wondering how OP Stealth Elf and Flashwing actually are. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope that helps you guys and clears things up for you when it comes to starting off in this game or even playing this game in general. This is everything I've learned so far playing the game for about three weeks. So I just wanted to share everything with you guys. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. We are growing so fast here on YouTube and I am so thankful to each and every single one of you. We have the giveaway video linked down below. All you have to do is comment and like on the video, sub to the channel, and that will automatically enter you into that giveaway, which I'll be picking the winner on Wednesday morning, so you don't want to miss it. And I will also be picking a random giveaway winner alongside of it. And to be a part of that, all you have to do is like and comment on my past 10 videos, and that will automatically enter you into the random giveaway. If you want to be a part of the Discord and Twitch where we're doing giveaways as well, I will link those down below. As always, I love each and every single one of you. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.